The deep sea is home to some of the largest and least understood ecosystems on the planet. On the seabed alone, there are a myriad of species that we haven't even discovered. This is the Clarion Clipperton Zone. It's one of many unique ecosystems that make up the international seabed. Here you'll find sea cucumbers, the Casper octopus, black coral that can live for over 4,000 years, and even something called a gummy squirrel. Every one of these species calls the depths of the Pacific Ocean home. A cornerstone of life in the Clarion Clipperton zone are polymetallic nodules, deposits of metals that take millions of years to build up. These nodules are a place for the Casper octopus to breed, shelter for the sea cucumbers and gummy squirrels, and habitat for these beautiful relincanthus. But these nodules contain metals like cobalt and nickel, resources that get used for batteries, cars, computers, and weapons. And now, both mining companies and countries are trying to make a profit off of our last unexplored wilderness and the animals that live there. The process of deep sea mining involves a collector vehicle, which is lowered to the ocean floor where it dredges the seabed for nodules. The nodules are then pumped back up a collector pipe to the surface vessel. In the mining process, plumes of sediment from the seabed and deposits of waste near the surface of the water, along with near constant noise, will disrupt the balance of one of the most fragile ecosystems and the connected water column. Another common myth is that deep sea mining will replace terrestrial mining, but that's just not possible. The mining isn't done by the same companies and the demand for metals is high. If anything, it will drive competition. Mining companies are trying to brand deep sea mining as a climate solution because some of the metals are supposed to go towards making electric cars and batteries, but it's likely that most of them won't help the environment. There are alternatives to mining our oceans. Some battery companies are working on innovations that could reduce the demand for metals found in the deep sea by 30%. In fact, it's possible that we can reduce our global demand for these minerals by 58% by 2050, if we make the right choices. We're only just beginning to understand the deep sea. But what we know makes it clear that deep sea mining must be stopped. Over 700 scientists have called for a pause on deep sea mining before irrevocable harm is done. And global leaders are proposing a moratorium on deep sea mining to protect the ocean for ourselves and future generations. The deep ocean is an essential part of regulating Earth's climate. It absorbs and stores over 90% of the excess heat and about 25% of the carbon dioxide that we generate as humans. If the ocean is disrupted by deep sea mining, its ability to sequester that carbon could be forever altered. That would threaten a lot more than deep sea dwellers. There's so much we still don't know about life in the deep ocean, but one thing is absolutely clear. We cannot afford to further damage our ocean.